And we're back with breaking news, a brand new CNN poll that we are unveiling right here on The Lead. How Americans feel about President Donald Trump just 14 months before he faces re-election in November 2020. There's some bad news for President Trump when it comes to his approval rating, with 39% approving of his handling of the presidency and 55% of those polled saying they disapprove. That approval rating for President Trump is the lowest since January when Washington, D.C. was in the midst of a fight over the government shutdown. CNN political director David Chalian joins me now with more. And David, where is the president's support that 39 percent coming from? Well, Jake, this won't surprise you, I'm sure, but Republicans are overwhelmingly driving his support. Look at that 88 percent number uh, approval among Republicans. Where he's struggling is with independents, critical to his reelection chances, 34 percent approval. And of course, Democrats, only 7 percent of Democrats approve of his job. But take a look how we break this down by race and gender. Approval among white men, 54%, Jake, it's the only category where he is majority approval. White women, 42% approval. It goes down from there. Hispanics, if you look at Hispanic men, 37% approval. Hispanic women, 23% approval. And among African Americans, he is in the cellar. Uh, black men, 15% approval. Black women, 3% approval, Jake. And take a look at where President Trump lines up historically. He is way down there at the bottom of the pack. Only Jimmy Carter was in worse shape at this point in his presidency. Now, some comfort, perhaps, for Donald Trump there is that you see um, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton are down there also with him, and they went on uh, to win re-election, of course, Jake. How does President Trump fare when it comes to questions about his re-election, whether he will be re-elected? Jake, this number, I think, may send a chill down the spine of folks at Trump re-election headquarters. Sixty percent of Americans say that Donald Trump does not deserve re-election. Only 36 percent uh, says that he does. And if you look at the issue set, Jake, as you know, the economy has always been a strong suit, and it still is. He's at 48 percent. But this is the first time in seven months that he's below 50 percent even on the economy. And everything else, he's down in the 30s. He can't crack 40 percent on any of the other issues we tested, Jake. And as you note, Obama was not particularly high. He was at 43 percent as a uh, approval as opposed to Trump's 39 percent approval at this point in his presidency. But what overall might this say about the status of the Trump presidency, given that we're just over a year away from the reelection? Yeah, he's clearly hurting with independence. I think that is a critical challenge for him and sort of number one item on the to-do list for him, Jake. I would also just note, though, he does have time and money, two precious resources on his hands. It is more than a year away uh, until the election. While all the Democrats are fighting among themselves, uh, he is raising tons and tons of money and has the time to make his case to the American people. All right, David Chalian, thanks so much for that breaking news, that poll. Uh, let's chew, about, chew on this with um, our experts. Jackie, let me start with you. Uh, your take on this. What do you think? You know, I think the, I mean, David mentioned a lot of this, but I think, you know, the economic uh, numbers are interesting. The foreign trade numbers are interesting. 39%. These are, these are issues that the president has really staked his reputation on. And he's really pushed to the limit when it comes to um, some of his biggest supporters. Um, farmers, for example, in Iowa and Wisconsin, these places where he really needs to win are hurting because of his trade policies. So that's that's a, a really interesting number. Um, and also the, the white women. I mean, Trump won white women in 2016, and now he is underwater with them. Um, and finally, the immigration number is interesting, 37 uh, percent. You know, the president really doubled down on immigration during the 2018 campaign, and it didn't work out well for him. Now he's on the ticket. The fact he's, he really does push this issue, he's really pushing money toward the wall. I wonder how that's going to work out for him as we get closer to Election Day, because he's so unpopular. And how do you see this poll fitting into the, the strategy of the Trump re-election campaign, which in many ways seems to be to double down on the base and drive out turnout even higher in those counties uh, where he won, where typically like a Republican might win 55 to 45, but he won like 60 to 40 or 70 mm. to 30? Well, I think so far what we've seen is that the Trump administration wants to stick with what it's done in the past, what it did in 2018, what it did in 2016, which is very much focus on immigration, focus on the wall, despite the fact that uh, he hasn't been able to build the wall or get Mexico to pay for it, and very much focus on racial identity and politics. They're testing that message right now, today, in a special election in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and they're going to see whether or not it works there. So it's something that they're sticking with. I mean, the num a number that stuck out to me was the fact that 71 percent of those polled don't believe the things that are coming out of the White House. 
So, uh, uh, you know, that matches with what we've heard this week, a lot of the contradictions around Bolton, as simple as that, uh, that, that voters don't seem to trust what they hear from the White House. David, you're, uh, you're a 2020 advisor. Sixty percent of those polled in the, uh, say that President Trump does not uh, deserve re-election. Uh, what's your response? How do you turn that yeah. around? So, so, so I'm not super concerned. I don't put, a, as you know, a great deal of credibility in, 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 in polls and snapshot in time, as you know. And uh, during the last election, uh, when the president ran, um, you know, he was at 39 percent in Pennsylvania when he got elected. This is a snapshot in time. National polls generally aren't, you know, don't really predict how, how things are going to go. Um, I, I like these numbers. David points out there at the end, statistical dead heat with Obama and, and, uh, and Clinton. There, you know, there's a 3 percent margin of error. So 39 and 42 and 43. So he's kind of in that same shot group. You know, I'd be more interested to see what the numbers look like. What are the numbers in Macomb County, Michigan? Luzerne County, Pennsylvania. Those are the places that are going to swing this election and are really going to tell the tale. We're going to lose. The, this this campaign is going to lose terribly in California and New York, right? That's no surprise. How are we going to do in those bubble places that are really going to predict the election? That's what I'd like to see. What do you think, Paul? What, what won the election? Well, he lost the election, but what got him installed in the White House were two He issues. won the electoral vote. He lost the vote, though, the popular vote, and we should never but that's not that. how we do yeah, it. That's Almost not, three million That's not Americans. how we do it. That's, that's not, not how we do it in this country. Anyway, I, go ahead. I, go. I understand. <laughs> it's also we don't have the FBI intervene in this country, and they did. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> Moving the forward. The issues on which he retreats to get that base yeah. are immigration and trade. And he's desperately underwater on both. It's really interesting to me. He's at only 37% of Americans believe or approve of what he's doing on immigration. And that's what he talked about last night in North Carolina. As you pointed out, that's what he closed the 2018 midterms with. It's not working. Trade the same way. A lot of Democrats voted for Trump because they liked his position on trade. They wanted a more hawkish position on trade. It's not working right now. The num the, the, all these numbers are terrible for Trump, but the most important number is good for him, and that is 420. That's how many days until Donald Trump right. faces the electorate. That is a Lifetimes. lifetime. Yeah. How many, 42 Scaramucci's? Yeah. I mean, come on. He's got all the time <laughs> and, and, in the world. $1 billion. Dollars. Let's not forget $1 billion. <laughs> $1 billion, that really $1 billion to spend on an election. Right. And, and Jackie, when it comes to President Trump's campaign promises, right. 43% say they think he, he's doing a good job keeping them. That's down from 50% in April of this year. And that's down from 52% in October of last year. Uh, even in, in polls where people didn't approve of President Trump, people were giving him credit for keeping his promises. But now we have it down to 43%. Well, that's precisely why you see him trying to get out of foreign wars right now, why he's, why he's pushing all of this money and draining military projects to build the wall. The promises made, promise and kept, is a great slogan. But as an incumbent president, you, you do sort of have to have receipts. And as you note, um, 71% of the individuals in this poll say they don't trust what they hear from the White House. And, and uh, that's understandable given the fact that the president says a lot of things that are not true, but that, that is a shocking number. Uh, that means that some of the people who think he's doing a good job and some of the people who want him reelected don't necessarily trust what they hear out of the White House. Right, and, and so I guess that what that tells me is that, yes, they may not trust what he says out of the White House, but as Paul, you mentioned, I mean, his base is very much with him, which is a num another number that this poll shows, which is 88 percent of Republicans support him. And so that's why if he plays to that base and is able to drive up turnout, it really, as it always is, is a, a game of margins in states like Nevada and states like Wisconsin and whether or not Democrats can boost uh, black voter turnout, which went down in states like that last last election cycle. And how big of a problem is that, if at all, uh, do you think the 71 percent who don't believe what's coming out of the White House? Look, I mean, it's all, look, generally, you know, polls will, will tell you time and time again, people don't trust politicians in general, right? So I don't, I don't read too much into that, right? I mean, I'd like to see the sampling, I'm, not to be too geeky, but the cross tabs here, what, where the people are sampled, what the sample size looks like, how many Democrats, Republicans, you know, where it's taken from. But, you know, it's, it's obviously, look, you, you want to be believed, you want to be likable, everybody, you know, that's what you want your candidate to be. You want to position them as credible and likable, right? And so to the extent polls say that that's not the case, that's a problem. Paul, what would you tell the president if he had hired you and you all of a sudden you became a Republican overnight? Would you tell him, talk more about the economy, uh, tell the truth more. I mean, what, what is the advice you Wait, would give Wait, hold on. Him? That sounds I, like me. I, I would, well, I, <laughs> These are things that David said. So. I would talk more about the economy, but I wouldn't scapegoat the Fed. Nobody knows what the Fed is. I'd really focus on China. They're an external threat. Uh, you, d d if you want to, dem don't demagogue Mexico. Don't demagogue the French. Really focus on China. You could really rally a lot of people. But he's hemorrhaging with independence. He's right where he needs to be with his party, as Laura points out. 
But he's, he's lost one out of four independents who he got in 2016. He beat Hillary Clinton among independents last time. He's down. One out of four independents who voted for him has now quit on him. And, and just, he's got to get them. But just, just, the, the way to do that is to go back to the position he had, for example, on gun control, minimum wage, infrastructure. There are all of these Democratic ideas that he claimed to have supported last time he ran. I think that's why he did And these well numbers will all change when there's somebody across the aisle, right? When there's another candidate when there's standing an actual across rival. the podium, right? These numbers are going to change dramatically. So let's wait for that.